This time on Pedalbox, before your eyes glaze over, we're putting more windows onto the car. Yep, we've installed a entire new A-pillar covering up all of the sins that are hiding under there, and we've also extended our front wing all the way back here. And that means we can finally start placing the wing mirrors properly and cut out the bits so that it all flows nicely into the body. It's only taken us a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I've just spent a bunch of time finishing up those front frames from the end of last episode with our little air curtains and everything, while Aid has been making up some window frames. Now, these are intended to go around some pre road killed MX5 uh, front corner windows that fit in quite nicely in there. And congratulations to Budget Outlaws for identifying what these came from. Uh, for everyone else who isn't Budget Outlaws, you should go check his channel out. He's got a really cool engine swap project into a Porsche 914. I think it's a 20VT he's putting in, though I might be wrong and I might be revealing how little YouTube I watch right now. But these fit quite nicely into our frame. It all looks quite good. So we're gonna finish up making this one. This is for the uh, driver's side over, all the way over behind me. And right next to me, we're gonna pan the camera over and show the one that's already tacked in place. Now the angle doesn't really perfectly match down the front here, but in terms of the total pillar size, it actually works out a lot more consistent than it looks from where you are. Because at the top, we've got quite a wide amount of pillar taking up the gap between our upright and the windscreen. And that just kind of rotates around as it gets narrower down at the bottom. So it all works better than you might think. Now, I've got to be quite careful with this. I don't want to break the glass, but it does just fit in. So this is going to be held in by a whole bunch of like masticky window sealant sort of stuff, same kind of thing that you used to bond the windscreen into place and just podged in from the inside. And as usual, we're not doing this for its own sake. This defines a whole nother chunk of bodywork. This finally gives us the shoulder line here that we can use to finish off this, whatever this is, the top of the wing coming back the body all the way back to the side mirrors. Pretty good progress so far. We've uh, completely attached the window frame itself in. We've also put a nice big A-pillar panel up the front. That comes all the way around to the edge of the windscreen. That looks really, really nice now. Obviously, we do need to dress the welds and everything, but shape-wise, it's all come up pretty good. We've also cut off the trailing edge of our kind of shoulder here and turned it into a little lip that sits underneath that we can use to weld up the next piece that's going on now. So this is just gonna sit over here, form over that curve, and um, I suppose we better get welding. And just like that, the skin's on. Now I've got to be honest, I'm not too sure what we've done different here because this has got a lot less ripple and warpage in it than a lot of the other sheet metal we've done. We've got a tiny bit of rippling across the top, but the rest of it is dead smooth. It's come out really, really nice. The window frame's completely in, the glass still fits. We've had to do a little bit of cutting and shaping around, I think, um, as everything welded into place. Maybe the frame got kind of tweaked a little bit, but uh, we've taken a couple of little tiny bites out of it and that's all back together, the glass is in everything seems really nice. The next piece we've got to take care of is taking a big bite out of it here to fit the uh, side mirrors in. But as far as the sort of pillar line and shoulder of the car goes here, I think we're pretty, pretty set. And uh, I've got to say, I'm quite happy with how it's all come out. So as Chris mentioned, we now need to fit the wing mirrors and that means cutting out part of our lovely new panel, which is very, very disappointing. But it will mean that we have wing mirrors, which we set up Probably about two years ago now, once we built the frame, uh, actually maybe a little bit less because it was after the first lockdown. But we've tested the positioning and we're happy with that. So we just need to cut out a small scallop for this wing mirror to sit into, if I don't just clatter it off the top of the wing. So this is gonna sit down. It's got its little standoff, which will go on this plate in the back. Um, and this will just bolt down into that. Now we've made quite a conservative mark around here, so we're gonna cut a little bit inside of that, and we think this is gonna be too small anyway and just nibble into it, so we don't wanna take too much out. That would be really, really bad. So this is just gonna be a slow process, just eating into it a little bit at a time to make this hole, and then filling in the inside edge and round the back.
So we've got the cutout done and we did go a little bit overzealous. We could have got away with not trimming out quite as much around this edge because at the moment it drops away from the bottom of the mirror. But this now fits in really quite nicely. If I just pull these bolts through and put a bit of tension on them, you can see where the bolts, uh, sorry, where the mirror is going to line up into the bodywork. So that is roughly speaking where this will sit. Now obviously this is a sharp edge here and we're going to have to do something about that. So we've got some more of the same edging, quite literally the same edging that we used on the uh, inner arches. And this just fits around the inside edge. Now I'm not going to go all the way around because obviously it doesn't touch. But if I put this on here, drop the bolts back through and put a bit of tension on, that is an almost perfect seal around this inside edge and we can basically make it a perfect seal later on but I'm gonna to have to add a little bit more in across the bottom but other than that this is it basically installed so you remember these panels from last time this is the bumper section on the left hand side so this sits like this way around and then has what I'm calling the air curtain scoop coming down the inside here but we don't have the rest of the panelling on. Now we've uh, finished up the framework for that. This angle matches this angle so it should nicely kind of match going across the front of the car. We tried with a couple of different angles but nothing really looked as good as having them equal to one another and on this one you can see it's not completely finished yet but we have the panel all the way wrapped around. So that is the driver's side, and you can see this is the air curtain um, outlet at the back here. We've filled in the top, we've filled in the side, so this should all be good. Now we've just got to put another one of these panels onto this piece, and then that'll be both of them ready for finishing. So after some work with the hammer and dolly on the front of this, I've managed to bow this out a little bit uniformly all the way across the front. Now there's still some more work to do on this one. I need to decide whether this is gonna go out or in based on what the other one did. I think it was actually relatively flat, so I think that's gonna be a little bit more tricky to do than others. This has got a small dent here that needs to come out, and there's a little bit here that just needs to push out. But otherwise, this is all of the metal work, nicely attached, it's been cleaned down. I'm actually very happy with it. However, I do have another one of these. And this one has had all of the smoothing work done. This has been nicely bonded over. In fact, that is doming a little bit, so I'll have to put that into this one. But this has been smoothed out and worked on, and this is probably about 90-ish percent there. There's still a couple of little low spots that need a little bit more filler putting on just to smooth it all out. But otherwise, this is looking really, really good. Now before I install this on the car as a test, I'm actually going to put some grey primer on it. And considering I haven't finished working this panel yet, that might sound a little bit weird. But I find it a lot easier to find the high and low spots with a little bit of grey primer over so I know where I'm going to be putting any filler on in order to um, eliminate it as much as I possibly can and only use it where I really, really need to. So if I put primer on this, I can then run over a little bit of sandpaper, find where all of the very small high spots are, where I've got a little dent from where I was shaping this before, and I can flatten that back out, and then I don't need to put any bondo on that area. So it's a lot, lot better to do it that way around. And then I'm only filling in where it really, really needs it, and I can try and get it as good as I possibly can with the hammer and dolly before we move on. But that said, I definitely want to put some gray primer on this now and see how it looks on the front of the car. Well, I'm pretty happy with how those look, 
There's a few fitment issues that I need to deal with. I'm not entirely sure how some of the brackets at the back appear to have moved, but I suspect it's when we were butchering up the uh, inner wheel arch and the support and moving it inboard to create the um, air curtain exit to go down the side of the wheel. So I think that probably needs a little bit more work just to bring that in because this one doesn't quite fit underneath the support at the top and the other side is a real battle to fit in. So that definitely needs a little bit of work doing to, to, to get the alignment right. Otherwise, the general shape of these I am really, really happy with. The one on the other side looks fantastic. This one obviously still has a few lumps and bumps and a couple of creases, but they'll all come out quite nicely. And they're very, very obvious now, as I was saying before. You can see here where there's a couple of little high spots, as I mentioned, and then this crease and this little dip in around here. So that's nice and obvious. Now we've got the paint on it, and obviously the splitter needs to be cut down somewhat as well. It's about an inch further forward of the very front of the car, which I don't think is too bad here, but obviously it comes out a long, long way, and it will be a lot of force coming down. I don't want it to rip off the corner of the car or rip off the bodywork or anything like that. And I keep hitting my ankle on this sharp bit on both sides, because apparently I forgotten that I put this in. So this is probably going to get cut down to around about 100 mil or so across the front and then just swept into the line right at the very front of the car. Hopefully you like what we've done. If you have any comments on the front end of this car, do let us know in the comments, like the video, and also subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell. And if you haven't already, you can check out shop.pedalbox.show where you can see all of our merch that's available, including these t-shirts, although not covered in filler dust like this one is, as well as hats, beanies, uh, hoodies, and stickers. And if you'd like to support us more directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. And all of that money goes towards making our projects happen. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.